Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more aligned with Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. The answers come for you. In the name of Jesus. Hello, family. I want to talk to us today about the need to believe in the supernatural. God's word is there for us to believe. The Bible says in John chapter 11 and verse 40, At the grave of Lazarus, Jesus approached and met with Martha and Mary, and said, Do not weep, your brother will rise up again. And they replied him, He will rise up on the resurrection day. And he looked at them and said, If only thou wilt believe, thou wilt see the glory of God. It means a man can carry the realities of the spiritual realm into the physical and at the moment by simply choosing to believe in God. God can do what he says he will do. The Bible in Acts chapter 27 from verse 24 to 25 tells us the story of Paul when he had a shipwreck on his journey. He said in verse 24, Sirs, I say to you that the angel of God appeared to me in the middle of the night and said to me, You shall not perish and the man with you. He said, And I believe God. Make up your mind if you want to go far and go fast in life to believe in God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 said, To us the word was preached as to them. But it profit them not because it was not mixed with faith. So it's not just for you to pick the letters of the scripture without r- approaching those words with faith. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 6 that you should be spiritually minded. Don't look at God and relate with him as a man. He's a deity. He is God. And he can do whatever he says he will do. Faith is based not just on the words spoken but on the integrity and the capacity of the one who said the word. Someone, for instance, right now can promise you a job, and then maybe the president of the country says, I'll give you a job too by tomorrow. You will choose to believe the president of the country more. Why? Because you know he has the capacity to do that which he has said. So make up your mind to believe in God. 2 Chronicles 20, 20. It said, believe in the Lord thy God and you shall be established. Believe in this God. He has the ability to do just what he says. 2 Timothy and verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 12. Paul said, I know whom I believed and I am fully persuaded. I am convinced, having a perfect understanding of this God, that he has the ability to keep that which is committed in his hands. So make up your mind. Believe God. Believe his word. Approach God with faith. Approach his word with faith. Everyone that got a miracle in scripture had one statement Jesus released to them at the conclusion of that miracle. Thy faith has made thee whole. For every time he saw a man operating in great realms of faith, he commended them. He said, I have not seen such a great faith like this in Israel. Your faith massages God's ego and your fear is an insult to him. When you operate in faith, in confidence, in the integrity and the capacity of who God is, it massages his ego. But when you operate in fear, you insult, you lower his value, you lower his capacity. So I want to give us quickly 10 nature of God that can make you believe in him. Number one, God is not a man. Numbers 23 and verse 19. You must first understand that he is not subjected to human limitations. If God, for instance, right now wants to journey from here to the United States, he doesn't need a visa. He doesn't need to apply and need a man that will have to work it out for him. He can just appear there at will. God is not a man. He is not limited or hindered by natural circumstances. If he wants to produce an harvest, he doesn't need it to be in planting season. He can make their best to appear if he chose so wish. God is not a man. Number two, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 and verse 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie. A man can decide to say something to you just to motivate you, encourage you, inspire you at the moment. But he knows he doesn't have the ability to do what he's saying. But God does not work that way. He cannot lie. If he says a thing, he has the ability, the capacity to make it happen. What it means right now is that if God says, this man is a woman, it means instantly that man will change to a human. 
whatever he calleth a thing, that becomes the name from that day thereof. So that's why God cannot lie. Number three, God cannot fail. So it doesn't, when God decides to get involved in a situation, it's not an attempt. Just like the way you see in your exam hall, they say attempt or question. They didn't say answer or attempt. Even though the lecturers does not follow it, they will still give you attempted marks. So when you answer, they give you answered marks. God cannot fail. God cannot fail. He doesn't attempt a thing. If he's involved in a thing, he has the ability to bring it from the start to the finish line. You must know that so you don't feel, if I'm going with God right now, my faith is shaking, I'm just hanging on, hanging on, and then maybe a little difficulty, you say, ah, maybe God cannot continue with this. It doesn't work like that for him. Do we capture that? Number five, God cannot, um, um, God, there is nothing too hard or impossible for God to do. Genesis 18 and verse 14. The Bible says that when the angel appeared to um, Abraham, and he said, by this time we will come and your, child, your wife will give birth to a child. Sarah laughed. And the angel asked, why do you laugh? Is there anything too hard for this God to do? Is there anything too hard for God to do? And that's the question I'm throwing to us today. Is there anything you think in your life that you feel is bigger than this God we serve? Remember the way you see your God determines what you get from him. Is there anything too hard or impossible for him to do? Job chapter 9 and verse 10. He said his wonders, his miracles are past finding. He does wonders without number. He does wonders without number. Whatever it is that is big to you is not bigger than your God. Whatever is challenging to you is not challenging to your God. There is nothing too hard. With God, all things not some. All things are what? possible what he cannot do does not exist so you must believe him because of this nature number five he is plenteous in mercy psalm 86 verse 5 he said god is plenteous in mercy so paraventure you feel maybe because of this i have done this i have not done i will i'll, I'll struggle believe god he might not want to answer me or he might not want to respond to my cry maybe he will consider my sin and not do this for me he is plenteous in mercy so you can trust him enough to receive his forgiveness and believe him for what you want him to do. Number seven, nothing matches his power. Job 9 and verse 4. He said he is all wise and is full of strength and no one hardeneth his heart against him that prospered. Nothing matches his power. So why will a witch tell, tell you you will see and you can't sleep? Why will an abalist in your village tell you I will deal with you and you cannot sleep? Nothing matches his power. It's an insult to God when you cannot sleep because of the threatening of a witch. You have equated him to the level of a human being he created, no matter the spirit operating in them. God can make them to lack the ability to become a witch. It's one thing to deliver a man from being a witch. It's one thing to release upon him a grace that can make him not to be a witch. So that even if he chooses not to be a witch, he will be unwitched. Are we together? So you must trust this God. Nothing matches his power. Not the president of a nation, not the governor of a state. Nothing matches his power. He's God all by himself. Number seven, he doesn't consult your past or adversary to, show, to, to turn your story around. Maybe you might begin to look at your past, your background. No, your background cannot put your back on the ground. He doesn't consult your background. And say people from this village, this is the height because of their limitations. This height I can take them to. It doesn't work like that with God. So don't ignore your past, ignore the errors, the mistakes, ignore your adversary. God does not consult them. If God consults men to put me in the position I am right now, I won't be here because they will begin to put their own factors in it and begin to give reasons why I should not be where I am right now. He doesn't consult your past or your adversary to turn your story around. Number seven, he doesn't grow old, weary or get tired, Isaiah 40 and verse 28. He said, for we know that the Lord God is everlasting. He never grow weary or grow tired. So God will not start a thing and because of the time it will take him, he will not get tired and say, I can't finish it. You can trust him. And number eight, number nine, if he begins a thing, he completes it. Philippians 1 and verse 6. He said, that God which has begun a good work in you will bring it to the very end. So when God says, I will give you a job. And then the job comes, you are done with interview and you are threatening that there is one man saying you will not get the job. You just go to sleep. 
You take a cubby and a little wine and you just you relax. Because that which he has started, he will what complete. Not even a man or a beast can stop him. You can trust him for that. He won't, he won't, he won't start up the work and be threatened by a manager. So if the man says you don't have the job, you should just be happy that he has lost his job. Because he can't be powerful than God. So he has already tell you that he has to leave the work now. So that you can get what God says you will get. And lastly, number 10 on that. You must understand that God is a rewarder. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. He said, without faith it is impossible to please God. That he that cometh to him must believe that he is and he is the rewarder. God does not use men and waste them. You can believe him. He doesn't joke with the life of men. He doesn't run a Ponzi scheme in this kingdom. Where he just plays you and says, let's be going like that, let's be going like that. Later he will jab out your money and run away. He doesn't work like that. Do we capture that? You must believe that what he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Just like for Peter, if he used your boat to preach, I show you at the end of the day he will give you fish. So that no matter how much the Bible said the net wanted to break, it did not break. Because the blessings of God, Proverbs 10, I think, and verse 22, make it rich and added no sorrow to it. Hebrews chapter 6 and from verse 10 to 12. He said, but God is not unjust to forget the labor of love you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints. He said, and we say this to you, verse 12, follow those who through faith and patience obtain the reward. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58 Said, Therefore, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, rejoicing only as abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor of love for God cannot be in vain, it's an assurance. You relax. And whatever I do in this kingdom, nothing done for God goes unrewarded, not even up to the release of a cup of water. Matthew chapter 10. He said, He that give as little as a cup of water to my disciple will in no wise lose his reward, not even up to the release. Of a cup of water. So how do you think your sacrifices will go unrewarded? How do you think your seeds, your offerings will go unrewarded? You are now surprised why you were involved, everybody was involved in an accident, only you came out alive. Psalm chapter 20 and from verse 1 to 3. He said, I will call upon the Lord who delivered me in the day of affliction. Verse 3 says, For he remembereth my offerings. So your offerings even create remembrance. Those givings create remembrance and can rescue you from disaster. Trust this God. Believe in this God that he is, he is what? A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Just be patient. Just be patient. Galatians 6 and verse 9. said, do not be weary in well doing. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Isaiah 28 and verse 16. He said, if you believe, then do not make haste. Do not live in impatience. If you believe this God, do not live in impatience. So what are the things that can boost our faith? Number one is the revelational understanding of the capacity and the integrity of God. Matthew 22, 29. He said you err because you don't know the scriptures and the power of God. The revelational understanding of the capacity, what he can do, his abilities and his integrity. Does he keep his word? Is he a promise keeper? Is he a covenant keeping God? So it will help to boost your faith as you engage Engage with the revelation understanding of the capacity. Know this God. Know him. Study about him. Read through the scriptures. See the miracles he wrought. It helps you to boost your confidence in his capacity, his ability and his integrity. Number two, engagement with the word. Revelation intersticates. When you go, go with God's word, you will get God's kind of result. Engage with the word. It's an impactation on faith on you. You get with the word that the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. So as you engage with the word, you get, begin to get into the realm of what? Hearing. Hearing that brings about an awareness. Hearing that brings about an understanding. Hearing that brings about an impactation of faith. The word sets you on fire. Ezekiel 2 verse 2. He said, as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet impacted me, to, me with faith that sets me on a flight. So engage with the word. Revelation is investigating. When you get the word, you become fearless. Number three, engagement with the altars of prayer. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. The Bible says, And when the apostles were threatened, they said to God in the place of prayer, Behold, they are threatened. Grant unto thy servant boldness that we may speak forth your word. 
by the stretching forth of your hands to heal and that miracles, signs and wonders be done through the name of your only son Jesus. The Bible says, and when they were done praying, the whole place was shaken and they were filled with power and grace. So engagement in the altar of prayer is an impartation of faith. Number three, number four, spiritual impartation. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. Paul said, oh my children, I desire to see you that I might impact upon you some spiritual gifts. So spiritual gifts are impactable. Spiritual gifts are impactable. What is impactation? Impact of a fraction of what a man carries. Impactable. Impactable. It's like you having a fuel and you have the stove and a man picking from his fire. To, there are two ways to get, generate heat. Number one, you have to either go and look for your own fire. Or number two, you just get an existing fire and touch yourself. So impactation is taking an advantage of an existing fire to set yourself on fire. Number five, encounter with testimonies. Psalm 119 verse 111. It said that testimonies are my meditations. Isaiah 8 and verse 20. It said, if not for thy testimonies, I would believe your word. Testimonies are clear and practical explanation, representation and demonstration of God's word. Nothing explains and proves his word like the practicality of his existence in the life of a mortal man. You can look at your neighbor and say, it, if it happens for him, then that word is true. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew, how that a young man was healed by Jesus, making his eyes to see. And he went to the Pharisees and they said, the man that healed you is a sinner. He said, that one is your business. I don't know whether he's a righteous man or he's a sinner. What I know is that once I was blind, but now I can see. That's the power of testimony. Is bigger than the written statement of a sermon because you are you are you are bringing the word in its reality. And finally, on that number seven, association with men of faith. Faith is what contagious. So every association increases you or reduces you. When you stay with men, of, the Bible says in Proverbs, it says, "Do not stay with an angry man, lest you learn his ways." So when you stay with a faithful man, you learn his faith. Do not stay with an angry man lest you learn his way. Attitude, behavior, character, responses are contagious. So when you stay with men of faith, it rubs on you. Finally, learn to demonstrate your faith. Learn to demonstrate your faith. As you begin to put your faith to work, take steps in the activations of your faith. God honors your faith. God honors your faith. You are in a meeting right now and the prophetic word is released. I say miracle alerts are released, you refuse to check your phone. You say she will beep by itself. No, you can begin to check and keep checking and keep checking and keep checking. And God sees your faith and honors it. Miracles are produced when men decide to engage God and believe his word. For every time God will produce a miracle on the earth, he will first send forth his word. Psalm 107 verse 20 said, he sent forth his word and it healed them all. Psalm 103 verse 20, he said, and blessed be his angels who excel in strength and who move according to the words of his command. So when men receive his word, they activate angels to move. And when men refuses his word, they make opening and announcement to demons to invade their lives. Believe this God and see the kind of result your life will produce. What have you read about scriptures? See, the Bible says in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3, he said, now we have these beautiful and wonderful promises that to this end we will know that we are partakers of the divine nature. Every promise of scripture is for your reality. It's for you to walk in and enjoy. He said, by those promises we will know, we will understand that we are what? Partakers of the divine nature. So what's our joy? We believe with our hearts, we confess with our mouth, and then we see salvation, soteria. Once we believe with our heart, and confess with our mouth. Now, look at what the Bible says. If I sit now while running these brokers and I get an alert in my phone of 50 million naira, I begin to dance, I begin to rejoice, yet there is no money in my hand. But I am confident that because I got the alert, when I get to my bank and show them that alert, they will give me the money. That's the word of God for you. It's our alert. I see it, I say, oh, this reality is in the world and it's for me. 
I believe this God and I go claim it on the earth and say, I call it forth into my life. I walk in this reality from this day on. Make up your mind to believe in the supernatural. And I told you one of the ways, some of the natures of God that will help you to believe is that God is not a man. Your faith massages his ego and your fear insults him and lowers his value. I repeat again, every day you work, wake up, everywhere you walk in, remind, remind yourself that God is not a man. He is not subjected to human limitations. He is not hindered by nature. If he so wish, he can decide to ex extend the hours of the day just for your blessing to come. Relax and trust this God. Relax and believe in him. And as we always say in this place, from this day on I pray, may God's grace continually shine on you. And as you take this word and move from this moment, may God continually on a daily basis show you a token of his favor. May God do you good. May your heavens open and may your destiny help us locate you. God bless you.